Tom Dorado. Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Cowboys traveled over to Tulsa this past weekend, take on the Golden Hurricane, and Bob, it turned out to be a long, hard night at the office. Well, it was, Tom. Uh, you know, obviously, it was not one of our, our better ball games, and hey, you know, I've, I've said uh, all along, if uh, if we continue to make the kind of mistakes that we did in the first ball game, and uh, we, we made several mistakes in this ball game from the standpoint of turnovers and fumbles. I think you got to give Tulsa credit. Uh, I thought that they were prepared and their, their kids executed well. But I didn't think we uh, executed as well as an Oklahoma State football team should. Well, a common <coughs> theme on the show this week is going to be the fact that we hurt ourselves with penalties and turnovers. Well, that will be a common theme. And, and uh, uh, when you talk about being a good program, you need to eliminate those types of uh, turnovers, fumbles and, and jump off sides and, and false stars and, and penalties downfields. And, and that's something that uh, we continue to talk about. But as coaches and as, as members of this football team, we have to get a, get a handle on those types of things. Well, we're glad you're with us <coughs> this week. We're going to have all the action from Tulsa when we return after this opening timeout. Well, welcome back to the show. Bob, as we take a look at the Tulsa highlights, certainly we had a big contingent of fans over there. As usual, that's nice to see on the road. Well, Tom, that is nice to see on the road, the Sea of Orange. I really, our fans came out uh, from the local area and from Stillwater and around the state to really uh, support us in this ball game. As you can see, uh, uh, they took the ball on the kickoff. Things started out uh, pretty started well, out didn't well. they? Our, our kids went down. They brought this ball out of the end zone, and uh, I think this is uh, Jer this is uh, probably Joey Webb, Joey Webb and Metcalf, and that's what we want to try to do: get the ball inside the twenty. And uh, now our defense comes up with a with a sack off that first play, so it's it's uh, uh, second and long. And you can see that we started this game out playing with a lot of enthusiasm and penetration, people getting off blocks, and we end up sacking them the the, uh, the 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 first play of that ball game, which is what we wanted to try to get to do all night. And, uh, then they go to their screenplay, which they ran all night, and this is a good tackle by, uh, I think, this Howell, uh, at Ethan Howell. And then we will bring some pressure again. Again, that we force a quick throw, which we wanted to do, put them in a punting situation. So I thought that first series, the defense went in and, and held and played well. And this is a big play. This is a great job by uh, Terrence keeping his balance. And the thing that we want to try to do is not block a guy in the back. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that all along. And one of our young kids uh, ended up blocking a guy in the back. And, well, we still started with great field position here. Uh, this is a first play. We wanted to go deep, and, and this is where our quarterbacks really have to make this play. We got a guy open. We have to secure it. Now we go with Tony on the perimeter, and the ball just came out. You know, it was a long night for Tony, and uh, obviously he didn't want to fumble, but that would have been a big play had, had he stayed up. Those are the types of things that Tom I'm talking about that, that we have to get away from. And all they're doing now is moving the ball down the field, throwing a, a three-step, and this is a nice play by, I think, this table of Blanc, and we have to tackle better than this, but the defense came up on that particular play, adjusted well, made the tackle. Uh, they, they throw to the tight end. Uh, he's wide open now. We're very fortunate that he dropped the ball, but we forced him into another punt. Uh, he ended up kicking the ball uh, out of bounds, and now we, we start that. I think we're going to start the second series. And once again, though, <coughs> the momentum continues to swing back and forth, and we got a chance to do something right here. That's right. Nice cut by Nathan inside. I think he picks up about uh, seven or eight yards in the second down situation. Uh, this is a false start. Uh, these are the types of things that uh, uh, we, we have to get away from. Uh, you know, I think our center changed the cadence here. We come out, run an option play. Again, this is a nice run by Nathan. Good cut. He's down the sideline for about 15 yards, but uh, one of our receivers makes a poor decision. Uh, the play is over. You don't push a guy in the back. It forces us in a situation where we have to kick a punt now down the field to them, but it took us out of any kind of sustained drive. And again, early on, when you're on the road, you'd like to get one of those in the end zone early and make the most of it, but penalties and turnovers on the night just made it tough on this court. Well, it did. It did. And then assignments, as you can see, that last play on defense, it boiled down to containment. Uh, from a defensive end. Now we come back out. This is a good throw by Tony to get us out of the hole. First down situation. Nice catch by Willie. We're sprinting back and we got Tony on the perimeter. He goes back to Willie Grissom uh, for another 14, 15 yard gain. And see, you know, we got something going now. We're moving the ball down the field. We're making good decisions. We're making good catches. This is a nice catch, but I think this uh, Terrence Richardson mm -hmm. for a first down. Uh, so we're first down and we're, and we're moving the ball. Now we come back out with a an inside play to, uh, I think that's uh, Jamal, Jamal Fobbs. Yeah. Uh, another play to Jamal Fobbs for, for a first down, for at least close to a first down. Uh, then we, we run a first down and we end up getting it uh, very close, very close call. And, uh, but the offensive line 
get it. We kept the drive alive, which is really what I wanted to do. And we come back with a play that we worked on. We got two guys open here. Uh, and, and, you know, we need, to, we need to make those things happen. We need to complete it. The quarterback needs to go through his reads and make good decisions and then deliver the ball on time. And then another drive <clears> starts <throat> to stall here. You missed that little wheel to, to Jamal. Marcellus Rivers, I believe, was open down field, didn't get it to him, offside, now it's third and long, well, now and a good looking drive gets right. bogged down. It gets bogged down again, and here Tony throws the ball away, and he had, you know, good decision to throw it away, but he also had the decision to run the ball, and he chose to throw it away, but consequently the drive stopped, uh, they take over on the 15-yard line, our defense come back out, I think we change halves, mm -hmm. when things happen here on, this is a... Uh, a stop route. We, we have to learn to challenge those guys a little bit closer if we're going to blitz here. This is nice pressure. Again, loss of containment. When we got the quarterback where we want him to do, we got to make sure that our defensive people contain them. And uh, this is a throw to the end zone. We got pretty good coverage there. He throws it away. Uh, and here comes that missed uh, field this, goal. This is a missed field goal, uh, which, you know, our defense did a nice job of, of stopping them. Uh, but as you can see, we have illegal participation. What is that? is that when a guy goes in, somebody has to come out, and that person has got to be aware that he's got to come out, which led to this uh, touchdown. This is a nice throw by, by uh, Fitzgerald uh, to their receiver, but that didn't have to happen. Uh, had we executed or had we demonstrated substitution from a, from a sideline standpoint, and, and those are the things that, again, uh, we, we talk about control, or the control is with the coaches, and those are the things that I as a head coach and my coaches have, have, have to get corrected. A lot of momentum swings <clears throat> in the first half. Cowboys down 21 nothing. but we were talking before the show. I think everybody felt like that was not insurmountable. Well, it wasn't. We went in the locker room, and, and we, we talked about the type of mistakes that we were making, and, uh, and really wanted to try to, to adjust uh, and we've been down before, and we felt very comfortable that had we came out the second half and started with a little bit of fire and a little bit of movement, that we were right back in this ball game. Well, let's take a look at that second half, because as we get into the second <coughs> half, you see another turnover leads to more disaster. <laughs> well, you know, I talk about coming out starting with a lot of fire and a lot of vigor. We, we, we come out and, uh, you know, Tony, uh, for some reason, with throws the ball into the ground in terms of his motion here. Uh, we have a missed blocking assignment, which our backs doesn't get started. Uh, and then we put the... Uh, Tony on the perimeter, he makes a decision to run, which is not bad, but he needs to tuck that ball away, and here we start the second half again with the turnover. And, and those things add up, uh, you, you know, uh, from the standpoint of, of your defense now is back in a tough situation. Uh, they, they crease us here, they score, and, and there's a really a 14-point swing from the first half to the second half based on our own mistakes. Now, hey, you can see later on the ball game, the thing I like about this football team is that we, we don't quit, we don't give up. Our defense went out and, and hustled and gave us a chance to really try to give a drive along. You see that's Brian Akers running the football. We get Tony back on the corner here. Uh, he tucks it away aggressively, he gets down here uh, and runs. But again, he's got to put that ball away. We're very fortunate to get that ball back at that point in time and give it to Nathan here back in for the touchdown. And then we get on the board, uh, feel good about that. And we still don't think, don't think we're out of this mm -hmm. ballgame. That's the mentality of, a, of this football team. And, uh, you know, had we been able to, to, to maintain that and stop them and, and with uh, uh, the type of mistakes that we were making in the second half, we might have gotten back into the ball. Game. On top of everything else, you got a little <coughs> rain at halftime as well to kind of make things just a little stickier. But, you know, again, the Cowboys looked a little better offensively in the second half, but hurt themselves, simply had to go back and get yards that you didn't need to go back and get. That's right. That's right. And, and you can see Chris came in and really did a nice job of throwing the ball here. And, uh, he goes deep. Uh, this is a nice adjustment mm -hmm. by Sean Love, uh, offensive call there. And, and our guys are making plays, which tells me, because we talked about, uh, you know, never giving up and, and always standing in the ball game. And uh, this is a nice big play by Sean adjusting to the ball, uh, which we now we get the ball down on, I think, about the 20-yard line and uh, with the intentions of going in and score. And, uh, this is a a nice throw. Well, Chris did see the tight end who's wide open. Right. We had the guy up the rail. We came back to that same play. Uh, this time we ended up scoring off of him. And he did hang in there. You'll <coughs> see on this replay, Chris hangs in there as long as he can to make sure that he can get free. Takes a hit after he gets rid of it. Right. Uh, he goes through his reads, which is a nice job on his part. And Marcellus is wide open and for a young guy makes a nice catch in the end zone, which gives us 14 points here. And uh, there's so much time left in the ball game time. It's, you know, people talk about going for two. Well, uh, we're in a situation where there's about 11 minutes mm -hmm. left, and as you can see, this is towards the end of the ball game, and they're trying to score, and, and our defense put ourselves in a situation of fourth down stop. And again, we go back up top, and I think this is uh, Evan Ethan Howe, which does a nice catch here, nice catch and run. 
Uh, he showed us something in this ballgame. We, we challenged him to step up with his speed. Uh, he made several nice catches, which was good to see. And uh, three in a row he goes on back to him here uh, on a on a short out, and he catches that. And uh, you know our kids want to get the ball in the end zone. This is a nice fade route. He made a nice adjustment on the ball, a one hand stab, uh, just one foot out, one foot in, uh, where he moved the pylon, and then we, we take the ball in for another score. Uh, which you know our offense now it shows me that they're clicking, that they're doing some positive things, and. Uh, it wasn't enough to win the ball game, but it's hard to overcome those types of mistakes uh, when you have, uh, uh, again, six, six fumbles and, and holding penalties and blocking the back. Uh, you don't overcome those kind of things with good football teams uh, and expect to win. Why don't you share with <coughs> our viewers what you told the team when you came in? Well, uh, the one thing I, I, I talked to my football team about is, is that, you know, as a head coach, you know, it's up to me to get them prepared to play, and the responsibility is mine. And uh, uh, what i got to do is really take a look at what I'm doing, what my coaches are doing, and take a look at this film uh, and evaluate it from the standpoint of how we can improve because it's, it's about improvement. And uh, uh, we, we have several good players on this football team on both sides of the ball. Uh, we've come a long way, and what we're going to do is look at the film uh, and make those corrections, and we will improve. Well, this game is in the books, no question about it. 2-0 and old Mississippi State's on the horizon. We're going to take a look at that game, but we're also going to conclude our visit with Linda Simmons. That's all coming up when we return to the Bob Simmons Show. The Two Minute Drill, brought to you by Tartan Golf and Gear. If it has your logo on it, we do it. Well, during last week's Two Minute Drill, you heard Linda Simmons talk about her recent recovery from surgery. We're happy to report she's doing just fine. This week, Linda tells us what it's like to meet the demands placed on a family of high-profile Division I head football coach. It doesn't appear on the surface that this surgery has interfered with your schedule oh, at all. I almost wish it had. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. It really hasn't. Once I was able to drive, which was probably within a month after surgery, my schedule really pretty much picked up and took off where it was prior to surgery. So I haven't really slowed down too much. Taking into consideration the success of the football team last year, the time demands that we talked about, mm -hmm. is Linda a different person now than she was when she arrived in Stillwater? <laughs> if you are, what kind of a change is it? Oh, Tom, that's a good question. You're making me think about myself. <laughs> Philosophical. Yes, it is. Am I different? I'm prob I probably am. I think my basic personality is the same. I think that's the way it is with all people, but I think that Spiritually, I've probably grown. I've mentioned that before. And I think I probably have had to develop a little bit more patience because of the demands and having to be in the public eye a little bit more. I've really had to decide what I'm going to read and what I'm going to listen to because if you get caught up in all of the rhetoric that's printed and all of the words that are said, you can really, it can really affect your outlook on life and what your husband is involved in. And I've always wanted to try to be as positive as I could. And I think maybe that's a, a change that I have had to really look at the bright side of things and always know that regardless of how the situation is, God is going to work it out for our good because of his love for us. And so, if anything, I probably have just become more trusting of him in the situation because you have to understand that when you're in these kinds of positions, there's so many factors and so many things that happen that are beyond my control and my husband's control. And if you try to say or try to dictate that these things aren't going to happen or we're going to make an effort to change someone's perception of us or that person really shouldn't have said that about 
or a shoe football program or my son or whatever. I would really become a very stressful and probably have a lot of migraine headaches. And I'm just not going to do that. I never have and I never will. I just am just going to continue to be positive and look at the bright side of whatever the situation we're in and just go from there and be as big of a support as I can. And maybe that's a change. When you're in a position that my husband's in, the demands, the need to win, the need to be successful, coming from outside, he already knows what he needs to do and how to get there. God put that plan on his heart, but I don't know that other people understand that it's a process, it doesn't happen overnight, and there are always those who are not satisfied with the way he's handling it or a situation with a player. And so if anything, I'm really probably going to be an encourager to him and let him know that he has to do what he feels in his heart is right for the program and these young men. And he can't be too concerned about all those outside comments and negatives that he gets often through telephone calls, through email, through letters. And so if anything, just to try to be of greater support to him and our family and to the team. Well, as always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for the visit. And well, we're so glad you're you. doing so well. Oh, I am. And praise the Lord. You know, Tom, my, my wife is a uh, great support for me. I, I think that she talked about being an encourager. And, you know, there, there are times when uh, <clears throat> I got to make a decision where uh, I'll go home and, and uh, you talk about having a coach's wife, give you a whole different perspective. Uh, I'm blessed uh, to have the kind of lady that I do have. You don't get a, a suggestion or two from outside, <laughs> do you, every once in a while? How to well, run the show? It's sometime, but uh, <laughs> she obviously uh, gives me a whole different perspective when we talk about different issues and, and how I should look at it. And, and uh, I think it comes from her knowing me and being with me and, and knowing how I think. Well, the game within the game, the internet question of the week, and a look ahead to Mississippi State. That's all coming up on the Bob Simmons Show. Welcome back to the show. And quickly, let's get to the game within the game, and hopefully this will be the last time we have to talk about penalties and turnovers costing us the ball game. Well, you know, Tom, and, uh, improvement is, uh, is, is the bottom line, and, and as you look at uh, the number of penalties and the number of mistakes that we have, and we, we've addressed it, and, and as you say, for us uh, to be the kind of football team we're going to be, we, we, we have a, a dynamite football team coming here in Mississippi State, and, and we, we, we cannot afford to be a football team that makes a lot of mistakes. Our Southwestern Bell Internet Question of the Week has to do with Gabe Lindsay. Well, Gabe Lindsay is a young man that uh, we, we like very much. Right now he's, he's playing a uh, defensive back, but he's a versatile player. We probably see him maybe move a little running back in, in the future. But this year, if he gets on the field, it's going to be on, in a special team capacity as well as a defensive back. How about a quick look at injuries after last night's game? Well, you know, uh, Justin Matthews is a young man that, that we, I, we thought had a separated shoulder than Raymond Cato. Uh, he's going to get x-rayed, and I think Troy West will also get x-rayed tomorrow. So, uh, you know, we'll, I, I think we'll be pretty healthy going in this ball game, but I'll have a better report from my trainer tomorrow. And there's no question, spirits will be up going into that home opener. Uh, spirits will be up. It's orange peel. We're at home. We're going to be in front of our uh, 50,000 fans, and uh, it's going to be a great ball game. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. For Bob Simmons and our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado, goodbye, everybody.